Galatians 4, 11. Thou art worthy, O Lord, what? To receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things. And for thy pleasure, they are and were created. So if you don't want to praise him, you're telling God you're not worthy. I don't care what you created before, I don't want to do it. Come on. I want to speak to you today. Offer up your praise. Offer up your praise. Don't sit around and watch other people do it. Offer up your praise. Come on. Brother Jim, you want to get your wife here, brother? You want to get your wives home? Praise God. Watch God work a miracle. I don't care what communism wants. God can do some great things for you. I tell you, you need to praise Him in the house. Praise Him at home. Praise Him at work. Come on. Folks, what do you want God to do in your life today? Praise Him. Anybody here need a healing? I need a healing. I want to praise Him. Come on. Praise the Lord. <laughs> you can be seated. You can be seated. Living life of praise is not only the most enjoyable way to live, but it is also one of the most powerful ways to change your life. Folks, praise is not a caboose that just follows what happens, but praise is the engine of the train that makes things happen. You know, too often we're so used to waiting to something happens to start praising God. I'm telling you, you ought to make things happen in your life by you start praising God. This train is going to praise Him. This train, wherever it goes, it's going to. I'm not going to wait till God blesses me. When they went around the walls of Jericho, they didn't wait to start praising God. They praised those walls down. Come on, folks. We need to make things happen in our life. How does that happen, Pastor? By praising God. Your faith is not complete, hear me, without praise. If you don't praise God, you don't have faith in your God. Colossians 2 says that, that you abound in faith and with thanksgiving. No thanksgiving equals not abounding in faith. Praise affects you. It affects the devil. It affects God. You see, praise touches everything and every part of your life. Also, a lack of praise affects you in a negative way. It turns the devil loose in your life. And it does not bless God when you don't praise him. Folks, you have to get this area of your life right. I'm going to tell you why the devil doesn't want you to praise your God. Most everyone agrees that praise is good, but very few people, any, uh, very few people responsibly to, are responsible to praise God. They'll tell you, I believe we need to praise God. Well, then why don't you do it? Come on. Well, I don't feel like it. Praise Him anyway. Come on. Praise Him anyways. Listen to me. Let me tell you something. I can't believe how many people look for excuses to stay home from church. I, I, it just blows my mind. You know what? If I don't feel good at home, I'll go to church and be with God even though I don't feel good. I'll tell you, the only way I don't want to come to church is if I'm hanging over a toilet. Why do we look for every excuse not to go to church and praise God? Because you're living, you're hearing the devil's lies. Come on. Well, Pastor, you're, I, I don't want to hear it. If you don't feel good at home, you want to sit there and watch the boob tube? Why not come to church and at least sit there and talk to God? Let Him touch your life. I'm telling you, we need to get this area in our life right. We don't have the revival we want because we don't have it right. We believe the name of Jesus, and that's why I was singing that song, and I'm like, I got to stop him. Okay, we believe it. 
Well, God says, if you love me, he told his disciples, if you love me, keep my commandments. He tells us to praise him. We were made to praise God. So we all agree praise is good, but we don't want to do it. Now, I don't know anyone who wakes up in the morning and plans on being depressed. Look at my schedule. Oh, I've got to be depressed today. Anybody do that? You put that on your calendar? Wednesday, I'm going to be depressed. I'm going to miss church because I'm depressed. Wednesday, I'm going to be sick. You guys are getting quiet on me. I'm, I'm, I'm going right down the, I'm going down the middle of the road, folks. See, I don't know anybody wakes up and says, I'm going to be depressed. They would like to be happy and praise God, but they don't feel that they have comfort or have control over this in their life. Now, I, I want to tell you something, folks. The devil does to you what you allow him to do to you. Okay? People don't feel they have control over this area in their life. They think that praise is just a response to what happens, that if everything goes right, they will automatically praise God. That, that, that is definitely not the case. Okay? Jesus told his disciples the night before his crucifixion not to let their hearts be troubled. He knew he was going to the cross. He knew he was going to be crucified. So he says, listen to me. I don't want you to let yourself be troubled. Come on. This wasn't a suggestion. It was a command. Yet most Christians today would think that this was insensitive and unreasonable. They would say that Jesus wasn't being understanding. He wasn't being compassionate. And the disciples were about to see Jesus arrested. They loved him. And then they were going to flee for their lives. They were taking this serious, folks. They would see Jesus unjustly condemned. They would see Jesus crucified. They would see him put in a, in a, 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 a hole in the wall somewhere and be buried. And Jesus, knowing that they, they, this was telling them not to let their hearts be troubled. So think about it. If he's saying, don't let your hearts be troubled... That is telling us, folks, we can let ourselves be depressed. We can let ourselves get in all kinds of situations and be down and out and pouty and all this other kind of stuff. And Jesus is saying, don't do it. Don't do it. This is my church. This is my army. I don't want you to let yourself be depressed. I don't want you to let yourself be down and out. I don't want you to have excuses for not worshiping me. There's no excuse for not worshiping and praising your God. Come on. They would see all this happen to their God, who they loved. You see, listen, to the average person today, what I'm talking to you about is unreasonable. Jesus ended his disclosure with his disciples that evening. And trying to encourage them for what was going to happen. And he was giving them a promise that they would have, that they would have trouble. Come on. <laughs> you want Jesus to promise you you're going to have trouble tomorrow? You want trouble? I don't know if anybody here wants trouble. Come on. Uh, the way some people act sometimes, I think they enjoy it. John 16, 33. These things have I spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. Listen, if you weren't here for this morning's lesson, you need to listen to it. Because it will go along with this, okay? He says that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation. But be ye of good cheer. In other words, I don't care what trouble comes along, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. He says, listen to me. I'm telling you what, you're going to have troubles, Denora. But in me, 
You have peace because I have overcome the world. Why wouldn't you want to worship God? Why wouldn't you want to praise God? In Him, you have peace. Wow! Folks, that is an understatement. He said, yet he said, be of good cheer. How is this possible? He said it was possible because he had overcome the world. Jesus hadn't been crucified, much less even resurrected. It was because of faith that the disciples were supposed to rejoice. He had promised that he would be resurrected and then reign. And if they were in faith, they would rejoice. So, so should we. See, we live in a negative world. A fallen world where it seems that the ungodly are getting more and more prominent. So much of what we hear is so negative, folks, and it is just flat out negative. And we have to make a deliberate effort to be positive and to counter the culture that we live in. Praise, folks, is a great tool to help achieve that. If someone were to pass out, the first thing we would do is check their pulse to see if their heart is still building, beating, right? Is that what I never took that stuff. Is that what we're supposed to do? In the same way, checking our praise life, how we check our spiritual pulse. Folks, if somebody doesn't worship God, we need to check their spiritual pulse and see if they're even alive spiritually. If we don't live lives that are constantly giving thanksgiving and praise unto God, we are not spiritually healthy. Paul said in Philippians 4 verse 4, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Paul didn't just say it once. He said it twice. And again, I say rejoice. He didn't want anyone, folks, hear me. Paul did not want anyone thinking he had made a mistake, that there was an extra exception to what he said. We are always supposed to rejoice in the Lord. Always. It's a command, not a suggestion. Not a suggestion if we feel like it, worship him. If you feel like it, rejoice in the Lord always. Paul lived what he preached. Amen. When he was beaten and thrown into the deepest, dark part of the dungeon, Paul and Silas broke out in praise at midnight in Acts 16. They did not just do this as, as spiritual warfare. They were not just praising God through gritted teeth. Oh, God told me to praise, him. praise God anyhow. I'm so mad where I'm at. I'm going to praise you anyways, God. That wasn't why. Come on. That wasn't what they did it because they loved their God. Amen. They didn't just do it to get out of prison. Come on. Listen. They were set free and didn't leave the prison. They didn't do it just to get out of prison. They did it because that's what they were. Their spiritual Paul said, I don't care where I'm at. I'm going to praise God. I'm going to rejoice in the Lord. And again, I'm going to rejoice always. They were actually praising God because they loved him and they were worshiping out of a pure heart. And so what happened, folks? It not only affected them, it affected all the others in the prison and none of them left. Let me tell you something. Here's a revelation. Praise will cause revival. You didn't hear me. I said praise will cause a revival. Anybody need revived here? Anybody's family needs revived? Anybody needs healing, revival in your flesh, in your physical health? Come on, anybody need anything from God in this church today? Come on, I said praise will cause revival. <laughs> Folks, 
we may not feel joyful. But the Spirit tells us in Galatians 5 that the fruit of the Spirit is joy. Come on. If we have the Holy Spirit, we have joy. We may not feel the joy, but we can choose to lift up our hands and speak forth praise by God to, in faith. Amen. Learning to praise God, even when everything is going badly, will change our hearts. It will make us such more, so much more effective. And it will cause our faith to abound. Now, I told you, God created us. Hear me. Here's something you need to understand. You need to, you need to know this. God created us to praise him. Isaiah 43, verse 5 through 7. Fear not, for I am with thee. I will bring thy seed from the east and gather thee from the the west. I will say to the north, give up, and to the south, keep not back. Bring my sons from afar, from far, and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Even everyone that is called by my name. For I have created him for my glory. I have formed him. Yea, I have made him. You don't want to praise him. You're telling God, I don't care why you created me. Created to bring glory. We were created to bring glory. We were created to bring glory. We were created to bring glory. Bring glory. <laughs> Revelations 4:11. For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. We were created to give God pleasure. Listen to me. The Garden of Eden was to be a place of worship. Man was put there. To cultivate the garden to be a place of worship. You know why sometimes Christians don't have joy when they're not in church worship service? It's because they're not cultivating their home to be a place of joy. They're not cultivating their life to be a place of joy and worship to God. Let me tell you something. If you cultivate your life and the place that God has put you, whether it's your workplace, whether it's your neighborhood, whether it's your family, if you will cultivate it, you can have joy and you can have, be a mighty witness. I'm telling you, folks, start cultivating worship and praise in your life and watch your life change. We were created to bring glory to God. We have, hear me, we have to accept responsibility and do what God created us to do. We are created, folks, in the image of God, we can choose, folks, we can choose to say that we are going to give thanks to and rejoice in the Lord. We can say that, but until we do it, we are victims. We will never be victors until we quit being victims. Come on. You will not be victorious as long as you continue to be a victim. Oh, this happens in my life. I can't believe that this is that and this is all that. Do you want to be a victim or do you want to be victorious? Come on. You can choose to say that we're going to live. We're going to give thanks to God. Then do it. Folks, we have to get rid of the excuses. And just do what the Word of God tells us to do. 
Philippians 4, 6, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. God, amen, here it is. We can, oh God, bless this, move this. Do it with thanksgiving. Do it with praise. Do you know, folks, what the Greek word for nothing in this verse means? Nothing. Scholarly, I'm telling you. It's amazing what you can look up. It means there are no exceptions. Sure, you might have problems, but you don't have to worry about them. You don't have to be careful about them. You can go to the Lord in prayer with thanksgiving and make your request be known to God. Let Him worry about it. He's up all night anyways. Right? Jesus, Jesus demonstrated the right way to bring our request to God. You know what He did? He used the sandwich technique. Anybody ever know what the sandwich technique is? Huh? You guys got to get into the Bible. The sandwich request... Our request between two slices of praise. Come on. Praise him. God, I love you. You're awesome. Hey, Lord, by the way, will you take care of this, this, and this? Okay. Ah, I'm going to praise him again. Come on. Put your request between two slices of praise, folks. Come on. How about it? See, folks, we are finished. When we're finished praising God for thy, you see, you're kind of like this. The Lord's Prayer. He started out praising God. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And he finished by praising the God, by, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. In between there, he prayed for everything else. Amen. That's the way to do it. Praise the Lord. Even the Old Testament for believers were told to praise God. In Psalms 104, enter into his gates with thanksgiving, into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. The nation of Israel didn't always do this. And in fact, the Lord said that because they did not serve the Lord with joyfulness and gladness and abundance of all the things, uh, he was going to bring judgment upon them. We bring judgment upon ourselves because we don't do what God tells us to do. Read it in Deep Deuteronomy 28. This shows that God holds us responsible for rejoicing and praising Him and being thankful for all the good things that He has given us. And too often we want to focus on our little situations, our petty problems, and we want to let our drips dra lips drag the ground and, and boo-hoo and cry. What about all the other good things? You're up this morning. You are breathing this morning. Thank God for that. Thank God for a roof over your head. Thank God for a spouse. Thank God for children. Come on. We face a lot of tough circumstances in this life. And the world expects us to behave a certain way when those problems come. I don't care what the world expects. I don't want to do it their way. Come on. Come on. They always want you to go talk to a shrink. They always want you to go to a doctor and get some pills. They always want all this kind of stuff. There's always some kind of a medicine or a shrink or something that the world. I know God. I know Jesus Christ. I know he is the creator of all things. But God told us to respond in a different way. And do not let our hearts be troubled. Folks, I'm going to tell you something. Here's something you ought to rejoice for. We get to choose. You didn't get it. I said we get to choose things in life. Deuteronomy 30, 19. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose Life that both thou and thy seed may live. I don't know about you, but I choose life. And I choose a joyful life. I live for my God. He is a good God. He is an awesome God. I'm a blessing.
bless man. I choose life. You got the cho You can choose. We have the option of following and acting on the word of God. Psalms 30, Psalms 137, 1 through 4. Listen to this. By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down. Yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. We hanged our harps upon the willow. Or you could say this, we hanged our praise upon the willow. In the midst thereof, for there they that carried us away captive required of us a song. They're mocking them. And they that wasted us require of us mirth, saying, sing us one of the songs of Zion. How shall we sing, they said, the Lord's song in a strange land. Or he could say this, how shall we sing the Lord's song in the midst of this problem that I'm going through? How shall I sing the Lord's song in the midst of my marriage problems? How shall I sing the Lord's song in the midst of my health issues? How shall I sing the praise of God in the midst of problems with my children? How shall I? So I'm just going to hang my praise on the willow. I get angry, folks. Because I see Satan trying to destroy the minds and souls of his God's people. We are under spiritual attack. And folks, when I heard that song being sang today, I love that song. Don't get me wrong. But I know, I, folks, we don't just sit around here with our problems and sit down and say, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, low is me, dear Jesus, dear Jesus. That is where we've come to. And the devil knows that as long as we sit around and speak the name of Jesus. Let me tell you something. Is there anybody, anybody here know that I believe and trust in the name of Jesus to do more in our lives? But folks, we can't just sit around. Come on. Oh, Jesus, I'm just going to hang my willow tree. I get angry when I see what the devil is trying to do to God's people. The joy he's trying to keep from God's people. The victory he's trying to keep from God's people. All these things that have happened in the last few months, maybe years, is not by accident. The devil trying to close the doors of churches. The devil trying to keep us from, from fellowshipping and worshiping and keeping us six feet apart and all this other garbage. And that's exactly what it is. It's satanic. Don't even try to argue with me. I get angry. There is a clear and concentrated attack on Church of Pentecost congregation. And we are under spiritual attack. And little by little, Satan has chipped away at COP, folks. And he has got some feeling, some feeling down, some feeling depressed. He's got some fighting amongst themselves. He's got some people focused on their problems and their pains. And so I want to serve notice on Satan and his minions today that by the authority of the Word of God and by the power of Jesus, name, take your hands off of God's church and God's people. Come on! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! 
Hallelujah. I want you to understand some today, folks. We are in the battle. And we're not fighting against flesh and blood. We fight against spiritual powers and forces. And these powers and these forces worm into our thoughts and into our lives. And they sow confusion. And they sow discord. And they foster doubt and disbelief. But more important... Hear me today. More important than all those things, they cause us to hang up our harps. But folks, here's my message for Church of Pentecost today. It is time to offer up your praise. Come on. Hallelujah. It is time to offer up your praise. Psalms 137 and 1, by the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down, yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. Where at? By the rivers of Babylon. In the midst of their captivity, they were in a hard place. They were now slaves to the Babylonians. Come on, folks, let me tell you something. Listen to this today. Because when you don't praise God, you are a slave. They were oppressed and became depressed. There we sat down. Let me tell you something. Nobody made them sit down. They sat down on their own choice. Are you to sit down? Any military people, are you to sit down when you're in battle? They sat down. They chose to sit down. They made conscious decision to sit by the river. And then they said, we wept when we remembered Zion. In the midst of their bad situation, they let their minds drift back to better times. This only caused more depression, which eventually led to tears. Don't sit down. I said, don't sit down in the midst of your problems. In the midst of your troubles. Folks, hear me. You can't move forward when you decide to sit down. Church of Pentecost, hear me. We talk about God doing, and God is doing great things, and I am so thankful for it. But let me tell you something. God wants to do greater things. But you can't move forward if you're sitting on your duff. Get up off your duff and start worshiping and praising God. Quit looking back. Look forward. Don't sit down. When you decide to sit down, folks, you are making the decision to stay in that spot for a while. Their problem was, first of all, they sat down by those rivers where we're always going to be here. I'm always going to have this problem in my life. I don't know if my marriage will ever get better. I don't know if my job situation will ever get better. I'm always going to be poor. That's your choice. You see, we might as well just give up. We might as well just surrender and sit here. God, oh, Jesus. Call on the name of Jesus. 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 If you're going to come out of your situation, you cannot be sitting down. <laughs> you cannot sit down. How do you defend yourself sitting down? How do they teach you that? To sit down and defend yourself? Who else in the military? You, were you told to sit down to defend yourself? No? I'm sure there's others. Huh? You can't do it sitting down. You can't do it all boo-hoo and crying and looking back. Well, it used to be so nice back at home. I, I hate being on this ship. Come on, folks. You cannot defend yourself sitting down. 
and the devil knows it. How can you move forward sitting down? Saints, it's time to rise and stand. The devil, we're not sitting down anymore. Devil, hear me. God's got our back, and God is going to bring us out. We refuse to sit down. Folks, hear me today. Do not dwell on your past. It's not going to help you. You can't change anything in your past. The children of Israel started thinking about how much better their lives used to be. They remembered Zion, the peaceful and security of Zion. And folks, the wealth and the prosperity that we used to have, the spiritual connection and the victories that we had in our life. I remember back when we used to do this and we used to do that and we had such great moves of God. But why'd you stop? Why'd you hang your harp up on the willows? Why'd you sit down by the banks of Jordan or the banks of Babylon, whatever they are? Hey, why'd you do that? You see, folks, they began to believe that all that was forever behind them. COP, hear me today. Hear me today. Our best days are ahead of us. All right? Our best days are... Come on, I'm going to kick you up off of the banks. Come on, we got to worship God. Our best days are yet to come. Do you believe me today? Our days are yet to come. I'm proud of my past. I've seen moves of God in my life, but I plan clearly to focus on my faith in the future. Some people may want to live in the past, but I believe that the same God that did it before will do it again even greater the second time. Your best days are yet to come. The greatest revival is yet to come. The greatest miracles are yet to be seen. The best is yet to come. <laughs> Psalms 137, verse 2. We hanged our harps upon the willows in the midst thereof. We hanged our harps on the willows. Nobody made them hang up their harps. Folks, the enemy didn't take away the harp. The Israelites made the decision to put them on the willows. What do you have to sing about? They were bondage. What do we have to sing about? We're oppressed. We're feeling bad. And because we feel bad, and because we are depressed, let's just hang our harps in the willow. We'll just let our praise dry up, folks. We'll just drop your praise. Don't drop it. Pick it up. You see, this joy, let me tell you something. This joy, the enemy can't take it from you. This joy, the world didn't give it to you. Did you, did your praise come from your money? Then your money can't take it away from you. Did your praise come from your health? Then your health can't take it away from you. Did your praise come from your relationship with your spouse? Then your spouse can't take it away from you. Did your praise come from Jesus Christ? Come on, folks. He has never changed. He, has ne he is still worthy of your praise. Folks, I have seen too many harps and too many willows and tears have been shed over all kinds of bad situations. And it's okay to weep, but don't drop your praise. <laughs> Psalms 137, 3 and 4. For there... They that carried us away captive required of us a song. And they that wasted us required of us mirth, saying, Sing us one of the songs of Zion. How shall we sing the Lord's song 
in a strange land. Now, you can look at this verse in two different ways. They were taunting and mocking them. They taunted them, saying, sing us a song of Zion. Or they could do it like this. Come on, you guys, now sing us a song. Come on, sing one of your songs of Zion. Come on. You remember Zion, don't you? Come on. You remember? And, and you know what? You remember you lost. Come on, sing us a song. You can't sing a sing, praise a song anymore, can you? You're a captive. Your situation has changed. Come on, Israel. Sing us one of those songs now, Israel. And they taunted and mocked the Israelites. So they, you see, there's, there could be an earnest desire. Maybe they earnestly wanted to hear one of the worship songs of Zion. See, they've heard about the worship songs from Zion. They, they've heard about these things. Can you sing us one of those songs that we've so much heard about? Can you sing us and let us hear how God has blessed your life and how God has done great things? Folks, I'm telling you, you can look at it two ways. They were either mocking them or they really wanted to hear. And I think, folks, sometimes we may think the world is mocking us, but maybe the world just wants to hear you sing the praises of your God so they can see the victory in your life. And maybe they're deeply down inside. They're desiring what you are supposed supposed to have. Or you could be like Israel. Oh, we're in this bad way. Oh, I'm going to hang my harp up. Where'd your God go? You used to come to work all the time and tell me how great service you had at church. And you used to come and tell me how great your God was. And you would tell me, oh, don't give up on your spouse because God can heal your marriage. And you would tell me that God can bless you financially. And you would, but now you're not. Come on, Israel. Sing me one of those songs. Or you can look at it, and a lot of us, because we, we're all about ourselves and we all have our pity parties. Oh, they're making fun of me. How do you want to look at it? Come on, folks. What, how do you want to look at it? They're telling them here, we want to hear about Jehovah. We want to hear about his power. We want to hear about his love. Come on, please. Come on, Israel. Sing us one of these songs. No one in Babylon can sing about Jehovah. No one in Babylon can sing praise. But you can, Israel. Come on, just one, please lift up your voice, Israel, and sing. Taunt and mock us, devil. Come on, devil. The devil says, come on, folks, sing your song now. Come on. Come on, Pentecostals. Sing your song now. The devil says, come on, praise your God now. The devil says, you are beaten, you are weak, and you are destroyed. You have nothing. And you are nothing. But what, what the devil doesn't want, want you to know, folks, is that he does not want to hear a sound of praise come out of your mouth. Because, see, praise is a weapon. Folks, how many times when you read the Bible did Israel beat their enemies with nothing more than praise? Come on. Hey, shout of praise, Jericho fell. Shout of praise, Gideon won. Shout of praise, the Assyrians were defeated. The story of Jehoshaphat in 2 Chronicles 20. If Israel had begun to praise and worship God, could not the same God, the same region of fire down on Egypt, the God that rained fire down on Egypt, done the same thing in Babylon? They just started praising, and God rained down fire. Paul and Silas in prison, when they begin to praise, they were released. Folks, Satan knows that if he can get you to drop your praise, then he's got you defeated, and you will stay defeated. 
Offer up your praise today, Church of Pentecost. Uh, offer up. Lift those shackles in his hands today. Lift those shackles who, has hold the, who holds the key. Lift your gaze. Arise, the one who sits on the throne. Let the song of the redeemed rise to the Redeemer. Let the dance of victory begin. Let the shout go up from the congregation. Offer up your praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. The world is watching us. Can you praise when things are not good? Does your worship still rise when your life is not perfect? Tell them about Jesus. Sing me one of those songs, Zion. Tell me about the healer. Tell me about the deliverer in your life. Tell me about the provider in your life. Tell me about the protector in your life. Tell me about the Savior. Sing me a song about Jesus. Come on, COP. Let's offer up your praise. Hallelujah. Stand with me right now. Come on, Church of Pentecost. Can we praise God even before the music gets up here? Can we praise Him right now? Come on.